Welcome to the call, guys. I'm going to cover how to eliminate stress and build resilience. And then, like I said, at the end, I'll give you an overview of what our 3030 challenge is. Now, to explain how my interest in stress and resilience came about, I'm going to take you back a few years to 2014. And at that time, I was serving in UK Special Forces. And although it was very demanding, I was also very happy. But at the time, I was beginning to look towards what, so I'm going to have to just, it's always one technical problem, isn't it? I need to uh, just remove the video. If it was going to run smoothly, then it would be too easy. All right, here we go. Okay, good, we're back in. Um, so yeah, at that time I was serving in UK Special Forces and although it was very demanding, I was also very happy, but I was looking, I was beginning to look towards the future. I was in a great relationship at the time and I was getting to the point where I felt as if I'd accomplished all of the things that I wanted to do in the military. So I was beginning to think it was time for a new challenge. The following year in July 2015, I took the plunge and left UK Special Forces. And by September, I was working in London in a consultancy doing project management in the construction industry. Basically, I didn't have an exact plan of what I wanted to do, and this seemed like a good opportunity. But that is when things started to go a bit wrong. And why a few months later, I was sitting on my own in the office, looking and feeling knackered. And I think you can even see on the back there, there's the uh, construction management stages of a project. Probably correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think that's what it was. It was 7 a.m. and I'd come in early again to try and get ahead of the curve. But for the previous hour, I'd been sat there wondering how the hell I'd ended up feeling so low. I felt zombified, almost detached from reality, which I guess was my coping mechanism. I had a head that was so full of racing thoughts of everything I needed to get done, but I felt like I had no idea where to start and no enthusiasm or energy to do any of it. And I couldn't really figure out how I'd even got to this place, let alone how to get out of it. And it was only with retrospect that I realized it was stress, but I didn't even sort of grasp that at the time, which I suppose is exactly why they call it the silent assassin, because it creeps into your life. And once it gets a hold, it spreads its tentacles out to affect everything that you do. And I'm sure you've all had unpleasant feelings caused by stress. When you have that fear of things to come, worrying about bills or problems with your relationship, while at other times your head is so full of racing thoughts, it becomes overwhelming. Everything feels so busy, but nothing gets done. And it doesn't take long before you start to have moments where it's like you're stuck in the cycle that feels impossible to break free from. You want to escape and break free, but every time that you try, it tightens its grip and paralyzes you. And here's the thing. Even though we can feel like we're the only ones not coping, it's just not true. The numbers are really clear. It's affecting more and more people with stress and stress-related disorders becoming the most common mental health issues we face in modern times. And in fact, it's worth briefly mentioning what stress is. Stress is a response that basically advises you on what to do. It's a reaction where your brain decides whether or not there is a threat and if there is, triggers a fight or flight reaction to make sure that we're best able to respond to that threat. And in small doses, this is a brilliant evolutionary system that works really well. This response kept our ancestors safe from dangerous animals or unrelenting conditions. And it's what's known as acute stress, meaning that it's short and sharp. And in itself, it doesn't take a heavy toll if we find ways to relax quickly. Once the stressor has been dealt with, we need to return our body to normal to be healthy and happy. And this still serves us today if we feel like danger is close by and we switch into survival mode. 
The problem is that in comparison to evolution, modern societies come about very quickly. And the system that has served us so well in the past is now malfunctioning. Today, we've got frustrating daily commute, financial strain, relationship disagreements, or caring for a sick loved one. These are all situations that can trigger the stress response and then keep it going for weeks, months, or even years at a time. And that is where things start to really go wrong. In today's busy world, we are prone to perceiving a low level of threat in everyday situations over a prolonged period of time, leading to a long-term stress response that is incredibly hard on the body. A good way to think about it is like this. Your body is like a small medieval town. In normal times, the population tends the fields, maintains the buildings, looks after the animals and enjoys life. If the barbarians approach, a scout rings the bell and half the population will stop what they're doing and run to the walls to defend the town. The barbarians are fought off and the villagers return to their tasks to keep the town running. That is acute stress, short, sharp periods of alertness and necessary action when required. But if the scout believes the barbarians are always about to burst out of the nearby woods and constantly rings the warning bell, it means half the population are always on the walls ready for an attack that never comes. Meanwhile, the grain's rotting in the fields, the unmaintained roofs of the buildings are leaking and the town is generally falling into disarray and no one has any time to enjoy life. That is chronic stress, continuous and unnecessary pressure that causes severe damage. And this damage reveals itself in many ways, like weakening our immune system. It's no coincidence that you often come down with something at the worst times, like when you have a particularly busy period at work or a pressing deadline. And that's because chronic stress does a real number on our immune systems, making you more likely to get sick. Digestive health is also closely linked to your stress levels, giving unpleasant side effects like indigestion, IBS, cramps, diarrhea, constipation and loss of appetite. And when your body is constantly in fight or flight mode, it produces excess cortisol, which can leave you battling a host of aches and pains, including back and neck pain. If you've ever been for a massage, I can almost guarantee that the masseuse has made a comment about feeling stress built up in your body somewhere. And this can also lead to tension headaches and migraines. For women, sudden changes in your cycle can indicate that you're enduring too much stress. And strange dreams can be a warning sign as your brain subconsciously works through stress that either you don't know is there or are simply trying to ignore. Making decisions also becomes a challenge. It can be easy to think of not being able to make small decisions as just one of those things, but it really isn't. Stress has a negative impact on how clearly you think and act. And that's the thing with all of this stuff. We don't even realize that they're linked to stress. We just assume that they are all independent problems. But your body doesn't work like that. Every single part of your body affects to a greater or lesser degree pretty much every other part. When we get sick or things aren't right, the symptoms might be problems sleeping, a gut disorder, issues with your skin or some other complaint but they are not the cause. They are just signals that the body is out of balance and that something or many things are wrong elsewhere. But once you start joining the dots, you begin to see how often we suffer and experience problems with chronic stress starts wrapping its tentacles around us. I personally experienced this and the stark difference between the two sides of the stress coin. During my service in the military, I felt completely on top of my game and in control. My tours in, Af <clears throat> my tours in Afghanistan, for example, were punctuated with short bouts of acute stress that were essential to survival. But periods in between this, it was actually very stress free because operational tours can be a bit like being in a bubble. You've got no bills to worry about, no busy commute, no day to day problems that can feel like a grind. And you have a brilliant social environment because you are surrounded by good mates the whole time. I basically had zero chronic stress and it allowed me to function at a very high level. But when I started my job in the city, that all changed. The whole experience was a stark change to my previous life, getting onto a round tube into the city each morning and trying to figure out costings and spreadsheets. 
Because the problem in our always on culture, being in a perpetual state of stress can start to feel normal. As our schedules get busier and busier, we adjust to a more hectic lifestyle without even realizing that we seriously need to take action. It's a bit like the fishbowl effect. Just as the fish has no idea that it's in a tank, the way we feel on a daily basis becomes our own new normal. We don't even realize how much better we could be feeling. And this also means we don't fully appreciate just how damaging this constant day in, day out stress can be. But I really started to notice it. When you're suffering from stress, it doesn't take much to actually lose your cool. Losing your temper when someone cuts you up, snapping at your partner or your kids for nothing in particular because you're feeling rushed or busy, or even getting upset or taking offence at the smallest things. And it's really easy to convince yourself that this is just how life is, how everybody is. And unfortunately, the people who get the brunt of these negative emotions are always those closest to you. I started getting really short with my girlfriend, picking fights for no reason, glazing over when she tell me a story, or looking at my phone instead of connecting with her. I also found that I wasn't taking part in as many social activities as I used to, because I always felt there was too much to do and I just kind of lost interest in making the effort to meet up with people. Something else that happened was my focus was nowhere near as clear as it usually was. And I'd forget little things like keys or my water bottle more easily. And small tasks like doing the laundry or food shopping seem to take so much more effort. So a big sign you're stressed is that even easy tasks and simple admin chores feel difficult to manage. My cravings for junk always went up, <coughs> eating junk also went up which for me meant the devouring packets of Oreos. And this is also linked to our evolution. When we were hunter-gatherers, harsh conditions forced us to eat as much as possible when food was available in order to store up the lean times. And that compulsion lives on inside us and comes out when we're stressed. The scary thing is that when we are stressed, we can consume up to 40% more food than normal. And stress hormones also influence the type of food we crave, basically those with high fat and high sugar content. So all the processed junk that is really easy to gorge on. And my desire to train plummeted. It was the most inconsistent I've ever been with my training. But looking back, the really thing that stood out to me was the fact that I've loved sport and exercise since I was a kid and it's a core part of my identity so for me someone who has a natural love of training to go down a path of eating crap diet and losing any interest into it that really showed me just how powerful the negative effect of stress is and how much it throws your body and mental state out of balance and it made me realize no wonder there are so many people struggling with diet and exercise. If you don't have a natural love of that stuff and you've got chronic stress bubbling away under the surface, which most people have, then it's no wonder that losing weight or getting fit feels like a massive battle because you're fighting an incredibly powerful source force. <clears throat> Something else that I, haven't really spoken about is the effect that it had on my sex life with my girlfriend or really lack of because my sex drive almost disappeared and this is because chronic stress affects the concentration of all sex hormones because the body produces stress hormones such as cortisol at the expense of sex hormones like testosterone and the cold hard reality is that many of us accept that a lot of these things to some degree or another are just how life is and I definitely got into that mindset to be honest it wasn't even a case of accepting it it just crept up so slowly that before I knew it I was that fish in the bowl and the wake up call for me came in two forms the first was that slap in the face that we all need from time to time um, there was an email doing the rounds at work with one of those life calendars. You stick your date of birth in and it shows you how many days you have left in life based on average life expectancy. And there it was in black and white or red and green in this case. Nearly half my time was done. And was this it? I'd already peaked with my time in the military. And now it was just a decline of energy with each day being a fight. 
It's a terrifying thought when you sit down and really appreciate how short the time is that we have left. But it was sitting in that office on my own, feeling trapped and frustrated. That was the final straw. That night, I really stepped back and took stock of the situation. Not six months ago, I'd been working on my own in Kabul, running an Afghan arrest force in what on paper should have been a far more stressful job. And yet I was suffering more getting the tube into work each day. And admittedly, a lot had changed. But regardless of the circumstances, there was no reason to feel like this. And that's when I started making some changes because I wasn't going to let this current reality define the rest of my life. And here's the thing, we can take certain simple actions that make a big difference to our stress response. When you experience a stressful event, <clears throat> your brain communicates with the rest of the body through the autonomic nervous system. And this has two components, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system functions like a gas pedal in a car. It triggers the fight or flight response, providing the body with a burst of hormones which trigger energy release so that it can respond to perceived dangers. The parasympathetic nervous system acts like a brake. It promotes the rest and digest response that calms the body down after the danger has passed. But if your brain continues to perceive something as dangerous, the hypothalamus activates the second component of the stress response system known as the HPA axis. And the adrenal glands will release cortisol to keep the body revved up. Chronic low level stress, traffic jams, work pressure, family difficulties, all of this keeps your body in a state of stress that is incredibly damaging. But what I learned is that there are certain activities that anybody can do which will counteract this. And traditionally, the first ones that come up are diet and exercise, which absolutely do play a big role in how we feel, but as I found, when you're living under that unrelenting grip of stress, your body is functioning so badly that it can be a huge battle to do the things we know will help us in the long run. For me, through a combination of research and trial and error, I discovered that it was a set of smaller, easier, simpler actions that I found and still find make a big difference. The first action I took was to implement a really simple practice that I'd learned a couple of years ago previously from our American counterparts, the Navy SEALs, whilst over in Coronado. They used a deep breathing technique to remain calm and focus clearly to avoid reactionary thinking or worse, panic. Now, breathing is something that we all do automatically, but the way in which we breathe has a massive impact on our mind and body. And I cannot overstate that. Breathing is regulated by the autonomic nervous system and is the easiest and most instrumental part of it to control and navigate. The way that you breathe strongly affects the chemical and physiological activities in your body. So in short, it is incredibly powerful. Yet many of us never harness the power of proper breathing to alleviate stress and maintain good health. A relaxed breath originates in your belly and the optimal rate is six to 10 breaths per minute. However, most people breathe shallowly from their chest 16 to 20 times per minute. And it's this shallow breath that keeps us feeling continuously on edge. Think about any times when you've felt stressed, when the body involuntarily becomes tense, your chest tightens and your breathing becomes very rapid and shallow. Well, the chances are that your daily breathing is not far off this. Not so shallow that you consciously notice, but enough to be significantly affecting your stress response. The slower and deeper you breathe, the better you'll feel. This is because deep diaphragmatic breathing strikes the ideal balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood, triggering various internal mechanisms that promote relaxation. When I added in a really simple short breathing practice, it made a huge difference. And it didn't take long before my unconscious breathing throughout the day was deeper and slower. 
Now, the next change that I made may seem a bit crazy at first glance, and I completely get that, but bear with me on it. I remembered reading an article about Wim Hof and the impact cold has on our stress response. So I searched out any material I could find and discovered the world of cold water immersion. Now, I suspect everyone in here has felt the shock of cold water before. The freezing temperature creates a stress reaction in the body, causing the fight or flight mechanism to kick in. So if you want to reduce stress, you might wonder why this is a good thing. Well, if you repeat this process of cold water immersion, it gradually reduces the severity of the initial stress reaction. But the real magic is that the reduction in the stress response applies in other stressful situations, not just on exposure to cold water. Your reaction to stress in daily life is also reduced. And this isn't just anecdotal. Science is proving the theory that repeated short bouts of cold exposure significantly reduces the adrenaline driven sympathetic response to a different stressor and increases the parasympathetic activity that calms the body down. In other words, our natural adaptions to cope with the stress of cold water immersion lead to less reaction to other unrelated stresses as well as an ability to calm down faster too. And this cross adaption effect lasts for months. Cold water immersion itself has been around for a couple of millennia in various cultures. And thanks to a series of groundbreaking studies, the science community are now getting really excited about it. For a start, you can enhance lymphatic circulation through the network of vessels that run throughout the body, clearing out waste, bacteria, and microbes from your cells. You can improve cardiovascular circulation, which is one of the most critical components to our overall health and well being. And critically, it boosts mood and well being because as water hits, <clears throat> as cold water hits the body, the electrical impulses sent to your brain jolt your system to increase alertness, clarity and energy levels. Plus, you'll build a stronger immune system. The shock of cold water in the bloodstream stimulates leukocytes, which means regular cold water exposure can help your resistance to common illnesses like colds and the flu. And then there is the resilience side of building things. Our modern worlds are geared to make us physically comfortable. We are rarely out of our comfort zones unless we choose to be. And when we are stressed or anxious, we try to control our fears by restricting our world, which ironically makes us more fearful as we don't get the chance to learn that we can in fact cope. In contrast, overcoming and managing the shock of cold water immersion reconnects us with feelings of self-control and the trust that we can cope. The process of committing to stay in cold water increases your mental strength by asserting control over your body and mind. And by becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable, you increase your resilience in other areas of life. Plus, it also requires you to learn to relax in the presence of extreme stressors, which is a most valuable life skill for day-to-day -day living. And you don't need to head out to streams or ice holes. I've used the simple process of daily cold showers to reap the huge benefits. Now, when it comes to mindset, I wanted to break down the concept of resilience because we all need a certain baseline resilience to deal with the setbacks and losses that are an inevitable part of ordinary life. Resilience is the ability to manage uncertainty resist and overcome fear while transcending obstacles that may appear to be preventing you from succeeding. Studies on resilience began at the University of Chicago in the late 1970s with Suzanne Cabasa's foundational paper entitled Stressful Life Events. And that's where I started my research and continued up to the present with books like Psycho-Cybernetics <coughs> by Dr. Maltz. But Cabasa's model is the best framework I've found because it breaks it down into three distinct areas that you must work on to build resilience. First up, we have challenge. And in this context, Cabasa found that resilient people view a difficulty as a challenge, not as a paralyzing event. 
They look at their failures and mistakes as lessons to be learned from and as opportunities for growth. They don't view them as a negative reflection on their abilities or self-worth. And at the root of this idea is the theory of fixed and growth mindsets. And this might be something that you've come across before. Carol Dweck, an eminent professor of psychology at Harvard University, published the seminal work on this in her book, Mindset, How You Can Fulfill Your Potential. She argues that our beliefs, even the ones that we are unaware of, strongly affect what we want and whether we succeed in getting it. In a fixed mindset, you believe that your qualities are carved in stone, which challenging events present a problem because rather than seeing them as an opportunity for development, a fixed mindset person will see it as a pass or fail test, something they can either do or not do. Whereas in a growth mindset, you believe that your basic qualities can be cultivated through effort. Obviously, we know that not everyone can be anything, but a person's true potential is unknown. Challenge and difficulty are a part of life, from the daily upsets like breaking a glass or missing a bus, to the big events like traumatic injury or death. When you have a fixed mindset, each time that something goes wrong or you don't do as well as you would have liked, you will end up assigning blame, which means you either blame yourself for not being good enough or you blame external factors for any negative outcome. Whereas when you have a growth mindset, you understand that just because something didn't go according to plan, it's simply a learning experience. And central to this is taking ownership of the things that happen to you. The reason that fixed mindset thinkers struggle with this is because they don't like failure, because failure to them is a direct reflection of their self-worth. To them, not doing well at something very quickly is a sign to give up, and therefore they don't embrace challenges. In fact, they avoid them. And clearly that is the opposite of resilience. Going back to what Susan Cabas has said, resilient people view their failures and mistakes as lessons to be learned from and opportunities for growth. They don't, <clears throat> they don't view them as a negative reflection on their abilities or self-worth. And so we must actively embrace failure and perseverance. Next up, we have control. And here Cabasa advises, spend your time and energy focusing on situations and events that you have control over. Putting your efforts where you can have the most impact will increase feelings of empowerment and confidence. Spending time worrying about uncontrollable events leads to feeling lost and powerless to take action. How often have you spoken about any of the endless list of factors outside of your control? the weather, the economy, circumstances, disasters, other people's actions, and attached a wish or desire to them. I wish this could happen, or I want that to occur. As Ryan Holiday noted in The Obstacle oh, that was on the webinar. is the way, in our own lives, how many problems come from applying judgments to things we don't control, as though there were a way they were supposed to be? How often do we see what we think is there or should be there instead of what is actually there? A handy mental model for this is CIA. Imagine if you will, that you have three levels when it comes to how you assign your efforts, the sphere within your control, the sphere outside your immediate control, but which you can influence and everything else which is outside of your influence and must be accepted. So when you size up a situation, ask yourself, what can you control? What can you influence? And what must you accept? And what in actual fact is within your control? Broadly speaking, it is these five areas, your attitude, your emotions, your perspective, your decisions, and your determination. And again, you can go into great depth with each of these, but having a growth mindset ties directly into many of them. So if you want to start somewhere, then reading Carol Dweck's book is a great beginning. And finally, we have commitment. For true resilience, you must be committed to your life and your goals and have a compelling reason to get out of bed in the morning. 
Commitment isn't just restricted to your work, commit to your relationships, your friendships, and the causes that you care about. Your level of resilience will at some point come down to how much something means to you. When you are committed to something, it makes bearing any hardships that you encounter so much easier to deal with. Working out who you truly are and what makes you happy and then placing your environment and actions in line with this makes a huge difference to your levels of resilience, stress and happiness. The hard part is working all of this out and what is right for you in the first place. What is your reason for getting up in the morning? What are you passionate about? What are your values, goals and beliefs? And how do you identify yourself? Have you ever taken the time to really answer those questions? If you haven't, you're not alone. It's not something we naturally do, especially once we get swept up in the fast pace of life after childhood. And asking deep questions about your identity can be tough and it gets harder the older you get. But once you align who you truly are and how you are living with everything else, it becomes far easier because no matter what obstacles you face, you have that commitment. In my own experience of this, I didn't see my military career as a hardship, even though I was working in extreme and unpredictable environments, because I was 100% committed to it and the path that I was on, which made the tough times easy to get through. When I moved to London and took the consultancy job, I struggled far more with that. I knew it wasn't right for me and that made everything a battle. Now, the physical actions like the cold water immersion and breath work helped me on a physiological level, but the mindset worked, <clears throat> the mindset work unlocked the key with everything else. I realized around that time that my true passion was in health and fitness, and I began to work on that on the side, which provided me with the commitment to move forward. And when you are committed, being resilient becomes much easier because you feel like you're on the right path. Now, don't mistake that for meaning everything has to be rosy and going well, because that's not the case. In the process of building uh, the natural edge, my five year relationship ended. I left London and ended up moving back home, which don't get me wrong. I'm incredibly grateful for. But on the face of it, going from part of the most elite military force in the world to then a well paid consultancy job, to then working from my parents' dining room table, earning 400 quid a month and sharing a car that cost even less than that with my business partner, it doesn't seem like a great place to be. But it didn't matter because I knew that I was on the right path and I was committed to it. When you know that something is right, a career, relationship, friendship, you can commit to it and weather any of the storms that come to pass. And what was the end result of all of these changes? Well, initially my actual situation didn't change. I stayed in London in the same job for a couple of years, but I changed and my stress response changed. And the difference that that made to my life was massive. I was basically my old self again, performing well and enjoying life. My energy was back. I felt mentally sharp again. Training and nutrition became easier. And I just felt happy on a day-to-day -day basis, which is exactly how life should be, not a constant battle. Yes, there are always going to be difficulties. Don't mistake what I'm saying here. But you'll have noticed that for some people, life just seems easier, no matter how tough the obstacles and after my experience, I've realized that that is, no accident. <clears throat> that is no accident or luck or genetics. Those are just excuses to avoid the truth. It's because they've cultivated a certain mindset and employ daily activities that create an ability to take life in your stride and enjoy the journey at the same time. And I absolutely credit stress management as a critical part of the process to getting where I am now which is running a business that in itself is helping people optimize their health. Now, what I've covered there is the absolute top level overview. As I said at the beginning, I could spend a day just digging into any single one of those areas in more detail, but clearly we don't have time for that. And before I go on to tell you about our 3030 challenge, you can absolutely go away and take each component that I've spoken about and integrate it into your life and it will change your life. 
Personally, it took me about six months to get all of these things in place through research, trial and error, and testing different methods to find a system that meant they could easily be implemented into my life without much time or effort. And that is really the biggest challenge when it comes to making a positive change. Knowing what to do is only half the battle. In fact, it might even be more like 15%. The other 85% is compliance, actually carrying out the actions on a consistent enough basis that you start to see the results. And that is why we came up with the 30-30 challenge, which is basically a shortcut to stress-free success. 30 minutes of action a day for 30 days to embed the actions, to eliminate chronic stress, increase your energy and build resilience. And not only that, but it acts as a gateway to further positive change. Susie was one of the first people to do the challenge and posted this in our community. Where I've struggled previously with being consistent with exercise, particularly since lockdown in March, I've managed to do a home workout pretty much every day this week and several walks because I've been feeling so energized and in a good daily routine. And this is a pattern we've seen repeated because reducing your stress and feeling more energized opens the gateway to further success. People are always beating themselves up for not eating well or working out or anything else they want to do, but just somehow never manage it. It's easy to think that how you feel is normal because it's what you know, just like the fish in the bowl. But when your body is in a constant state of chronic stress, it has a direct impact on your mental and physical capacity. So it's no wonder that everything new you try to implement feels like an uphill struggle. When you take that pressure off your body and everything can function as it should, the difference is night and day. Anna wrote this after finishing the challenge. Moving forward, I'm continuing with all the elements and feel in a much better place overall than I did 30 days ago. Collectively, all the elements put together have been a real game changer for me and have opened my mind to a much more effective, productive way of life. And this is how it works. Over the 30 days, we use a simple step-by-step -step blueprint. First of all, you learn how to build a resilient mindset. You'll learn simple strategies to create a mindset that serves you and eliminates those worries and doubts that sabotage your happiness and progress. You'll also create a short daily routine to reset your parasympathetic nervous system. This will be in the form of short blasts of cold water immersion. We'll start small and gradually build up the tolerance over the 30 days until you're experiencing the profound positive effect this stimulation has on body and mind. There will also be an easy to follow daily three chamber breathing routine, which takes less than 10 minutes out of your day, but gives you back hours in energy and focus. Plus, these actions will not only give you immediate results, they will significantly upgrade your health for the rest of your life. As Esther said, the course says 30 minutes a day, but the steps are so simple and achievable that they really can be incorporated into your daily routine. And from someone who hated the cold and cold water, after just a few days, she started to actually look forward to and even see her daily cold showers as a highlight. In combination with this, we are going to give small, easy to accomplish strategies around the big six factors that influence your stress response, sleep, stimulants, screen time, sunshine, schedule and smiles. We'll provide you with all the templates and checklists so that hard work is done for you. And again, although these won't take much time, the payback from them will be massive. We'll make sure that you master each area and implement simple changes so that your days start to flow rather than feeling like a battle. In fact, by the end of the 30 days, you'll have transformed your stress response. A healthy stress response makes you alert and will prime your body to tackle challenges. And that is what we're going to achieve. Andrew sent this message after only 24 hours into the course, having realized how life changing it is once you understand the body's stress response and start using it to your advantage. The 30-30 challenge is essentially the opportunity to skip the trial and error and follow a proven process. It's a step-by-step -step blueprint that anyone can follow. Everything that you need is built into a membership platform with concise, easy-to-follow steps. All of the information is one place, easy to access, easy to understand, and easy to action. I grabbed this conversation between Vicky and Rob from the community group. 
seeing the change in energy and alertness is what keeps me going. Unbelievable that I've only just discovered this technique. I need to go back 20 years and have a word with myself. How was I not doing this earlier? The system works and it's not just you who will benefit. Those stress hormones that cause havoc in our body and on our emotional state don't just affect us, they have an impact on those around us. Something that Gavin found and that we hear a lot is that he's much calmer and his family have said he's less grumpy and bad tempered. And by removing obstacles, which in Gavin's case was feeling, having a feeling of imposter syndrome and building resilience, you become the best version of yourself. And the biggest roadblock that stands in most people's way is underlying chronic stress. Until you restore that hormonal balance and build a serving mindset, you're going to spend your entire life with everything feeling much harder than it needs to be. And it's completely unnecessary. Along with a step-by-step -step blueprint, will give you the biggest key to unlocking success, which is consistency. When you surround yourself with positive people driving towards the same goal, you get that support and accountability you need to make big changes. Because what you get is this funnel effect, which makes sure you always stay on track. On the one side, you have the community, and on the other, you have expert coaches, making sure you get the right feedback to improve and to keep you accountable. And that's why we have <clears throat> That's why we offer one-to-one -one access both to myself and David Tilston. You'll get the benefit of my experience serving special forces and the lessons I learned in that world, plus the lessons I learned in my own journey to beat chronic stress. And David also knows adversity first hand with tours in Afghanistan as a Royal Marine Commando. On top of that, he has over a decade of experience teaching yoga, breath work and calisthenics and is now one of the leading coaches in the UK. And the end result is that you stack the deck in your favor. The 30-30 challenge is a shortcut to save you from the time and effort figuring out the strategies to combat stress and build resilience. Instead, we're gonna give them to you in a form that is quick and easy to implement. And the cost of the 30-30 challenge is a one-off payment of 47 pounds, which to put that in perspective is less than a price of a single cup of coffee each day. So that's £1.57 a day for a step-by-step -step blueprint and one-to-one -one coaching to remove the obstacles holding you back and building a strong, resilient mindset. And we're so confident in the programme that we give an unlimited, for any reason, refund guarantee. That means even if you come to us in 12 months' time, we'll give you your money back, no questions asked. And the reason that we can do this is because, honestly, people don't ask for refunds because it works. It's a solid tested system and when people follow it, the results are life changing. And that is the 3030 challenge, essentially a guided roadmap with coaches and community to eliminate chronic stress and increase resilience.